I started out doing the grid as usual, and in this case the squares are 5 eighths of an inch. I then drew the outline of Cheyenne, including the color changes in her feathers. I then erased the grid and tried to lighten my outline without completely erasing it. At this point, I should mention that the medium I'm using is watercolor, specifically watercolor pencils. I've played around a little with these pencils, but I haven't actually painted with watercolor since high school. I watched a quick tutorial on how I was supposed to use the pencils, and with some indecision on where to get started, I got going. I used the black first, testing out how to get darker and lighter colors from my materials. As I was working on the beak, I added some blue and teal as grazing it to be a little cooler in tone. I tried to maintain texture and limiting the loss of highlights as I worked. I went back several times as the paint dried to darken colors. I tried to use the white to add back some highlights, which worked a little, but not well, something I'll have to keep in mind as I continue to work. After letting it dry, I went back and added some shadows back to the top of the beak before moving on to the bottom. The bottom beak is in the shadows and is darker than the top of her beak. I tried to maintain the highlights as I worked, and I actually had to go over the white areas with a little diluted blue and a bit of gray to darken the edges a bit. I started on Cheyenne's face by laying down white with the idea that if I put down too much color that it would dilute it. I outlined her eye with black and started adding the shadows to the white feathers. I did switch over the eye rather quickly because it's always my favorite part to draw or paint as it seems to finally give the piece life. I used white, yellow, and peach for her iris, and blue and black for her pupil. I took extra care not to color in the white reflections in her eye. I want to take a second here and say that macaws look a bit odd without the black feathers on their faces. With that thought, the next thing I was focused on was the black feathers. My main concern was making sure that I was able to fit all the feathers in around the right spot without skewing their size. I stopped a couple of times to think about them as I went. Now on to all the colored feathers. I actually took the time at this point to sharpen some of the pencils I had been using to clean them up and organize the colors I knew I would need from this point on. I started on the feathers by laying down the colors in their places with the pencils, then adding the water to blend. I wanted to lay out the basic outlines of the colors before I started adding details. All the details are darker than the colors I have put down and can be added next. At this point my camera cut out so I lost the footage as my phone's memory was full. I worked on finishing the green feathers and defining the blue feathers. After finishing those up, I started playing with the yellows and oranges to get the gold for her cheek. When I found the right combination, I began to work on those feathers next. However, the next day I decided that I would focus on finishing the blue feathers before moving on to the gold feathers. The gold feathers don't have as many details as the rest of the feathers, so I used a darker hue to add the details. I feathered the edges to add dimension. I thought I was ready to move on to the black feathers underneath. Unfortunately at this point, I wasn't happy with the width or height of the feathers and decided to tack the height of the blue feathers by adding some length to them. I added the gray to the black feathers under Cheyenne's beak before returning to lengthen the blue feathers towards the back of her head. After adding the length, I went back over and added the blue shadows back. I returned to the black feathers and added the shadows there. At this point, I took a moment to step back and look over the painting. I wasn't happy with how dark the orange turned out. To remedy this, I took a brush wet with just water to pull the color up and a paper towel to dab it away. I added a little golden yellow back, and at this point, I was finished. Here are some of my final thoughts. 
It was hard to let go of using the grid, and this is far from perfect, but I'm happy that I decided to do it in watercolor. It's been years since I used it, and I always thought it was impossible to do fine details of bright colors with it, and I proved myself wrong. <laughs>